I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Max Harper, a seasoned long-haul trucker, knew the highways like the back of his hand. His roots stretched across the continental United States, through bustling cities and desolate stretches where the only company was the hum of his engine and the occasional crackle of his CB radio. But of all his routes, Route 44 through rural New Mexico had always given him the creeps. Locals talked of strange disappearances and unexplained phenomena along the so-called Phantom Stretch, a 10-mile section of road known for its unsettling silence and lack of wildlife. On a chilly October night, Max found himself driving Route 44, hauling a load of electronics bound for Phoenix. He'd timed his journey to avoid driving the Phantom Stretch at night, but a delayed start and unexpected traffic had thrown off his schedule. As he approached the infamous stretch, the sun dipped below the horizon and the landscape was swallowed by darkness. Max's headlights carved a path through the night, the road ahead unwinding like a dark ribbon. He checked his watch. It was just past midnight and he was right on schedule to hit the Phantom Stretch. He reached for the radio, seeking the familiar voice of another trucker or even a late night radio show, anything to break the silence that had begun to envelop him. Static filled the cab, the frequencies usually bustling with chatter now eerily quiet. Feeling uneasy, Max increased his speed, the dull roar of the engine a small comfort. That's when things started to happen. First, his dashboard lights flickered, a quick off and on that he chalked up to a possible electrical short. But when the headlights began to dim, pulsing with a rhythm that seemed almost like a heartbeat, Max felt a cold shiver run down his spine. The road ahead was now barely visible the edges of his headlights reach fading into the oppressive blackness that surrounded him. Max tapped on the dashboard, a habit when his rig acted up, but this time it offered no solace. Then, without warning, his headlights flickered out completely, plunging him into darkness. He slammed on the brakes, his heart pounding, and the truck skidded to a stop, the sound of the tires screeching against the asphalt a harsh break in the silence. Max sat in the darkness, his breath coming in short, sharp gasps. He fumbled for his flashlight, his hands shaking as he clicked it on. The beam pierced the darkness ahead, but it was weak, barely reaching the road in front of the truck. He considered his options, waiting until daylight was safest, but the idea of spending hours in this eerie darkness was not appealing. Determined to fix his lights and get out of there, Max grabbed his toolkit from behind the seat and opened his door. The night air was cold and still, as if the world around him had stopped breathing. He rounded the front of the truck, the beam of his flashlight bouncing off the chrome of the grill, as he inspected the wiring, Max heard it. A faint whisper carried on the wind, indistinct but unmistakably human. He froze, shining his flashlight into the surrounding darkness, but there was nothing. Just the empty road and the quiet desert. Shaking off the feeling of being watched, Max hurried his repairs, his fingers numb with cold and fear. Suddenly, the whispering returned, louder this time a soft murmuring that seemed to come from right behind him. Max spun around, his flashlight slicing through the night, revealing nothing but the empty road and his long shadow stretching out behind him. The murmuring stopped as abruptly as it had started, leaving Max in a silence so deep it buzzed in his ears. The story of Max Harper's night on the Phantom Stretch was far from over. As he stood alone on the dark highway, the real horror of Route 44 was just beginning to unfold, and what lay ahead on that desolate road would test the limits of his skepticism and his sanity. Max tightened the last screw on the headlight assembly with shaky hands, his ears still ringing with the eerie whispers that had momentarily filled the air. He clicked the flashlight off, conserving the batteries just in case, and hurried back into the cab to test the lights. He held his breath as he turned the key in the ignition, the engine roared to life, and thankfully, the headlights flickered on, casting long beams of light down the dark highway. Breathing a sigh of relief, Max decided he couldn't risk any more delays. He needed to get through the phantom stretch as quickly as possible. He pulled the truck back onto the road, the engine's steady hum a comforting sound against the quiet of the night. As he accelerated, Max kept his eyes fixed on the road ahead, trying to ignore the unsettling feeling of being watched. The truck's cab was suddenly filled with the crackle of his CB radio. Static burst through the speaker, then a voice, garbled and distant, as if coming from a great distance or another time. Help me 
Please, it whispered, barely audible over the static. Max's heart skipped a beat. He grabbed the radio mic, pressing the talk button. Hello? Who's there? Can you hear me? But there was no response, only a return to the oppressive silence that seemed to envelop the truck. Feeling more isolated than ever, Max pressed harder on the accelerator, the truck's speedometer creeping higher as he sought to outpace the growing sense of dread. The road stretched on, the landscape unchanging, when suddenly, his headlights illuminated something in the distance, something in the middle of the road. As he drew closer, Max could make out the figure of a person standing in the center of the highway, arms by their sides, head tilted upwards as though staring at the sky. Max's first instinct was to stop and help, but something about the figure's stillness and the way they were standing made him hesitate. He slowed the truck, his foot hovering over the brake pedal. Hey! Max shouted out the window, unsure why his voice was barely a whisper. Do you need help? There was no movement from the figure. They remained eerily still, their face hidden by shadows. With a deep breath, Max edged the truck closer, his headlights casting more light on the figure. It was a woman, her clothes tattered, her hair wild and unkempt. As the light hit her face, she slowly turned her head to look at him. Her eyes were hollow, her expression blank, yet filled with an unspeakable sadness. Max felt a chill run down his spine. He knew he should drive away, leave this phantom figure to her solitude on the highway, but his conscience wouldn't let him. He pulled the truck to a stop a safe distance away and opened the door, stepping out into the cool night air. Ma'am, are you okay? Do you need me to call someone? Max asked, approaching her cautiously. The woman didn't respond. She simply stood there, looking through him as if he were part of the mist that began to rise around them. The air grew colder, and Max noticed for the first time the silence had returned, the sound of his running truck engine eerily absent. As he took another step toward her, the ground beneath his feet began to tremble, a low rumbling that grew into a roar as the earth itself seemed to split open. Max stumbled back towards his truck, his eyes wide with horror as he watched the road fracture and crack, a deep chasm opening between him and the woman. The story of Max Harper on the Phantom Stretch, now caught in an unfolding nightmare, was far from over. As he scrambled back into his truck, trying to escape the collapsing highway, he realized that whatever haunted Route 44, it was not just a legend, it was real, and it was far from done with him. Max slammed the door of his truck and threw it into reverse, tires screeching against the fragmented asphalt as the ground continued to tremble violently beneath him. The chasm in the road widened, its edges crumbling away into the dark abyss below. Max's heart raced as he maneuvered the truck, steering it away from the expanding gap that threatened to swallow him whole. As he glanced back at the road, he was horrified to see that the woman had begun to walk towards him, her movements slow and deliberate, unaffected by the chaos erupting around her. Her eyes, hollow and devoid of life, were fixed on Max, drawing him into her despair. Despite the danger, something in her gaze held him momentarily captive, her sorrow resonating with a depth that was almost palpable. Breaking the trance, Max focused on escaping the disintegrating highway. He managed to turn the truck around, facing the way he had come, when a sudden powerful force rocked the vehicle. The earth shifted dramatically, tilting the road as if it were nothing more than a rug being pulled at one end. Max gripped the steering wheel tightly, his knuckles white, as he fought to control the truck on the unstable ground. The radio crackled to life again, the same ghostly voice piercing through the static, now louder, more desperate. Help me, please, free me. The plea was chilling, filled with an agony that echoed the torment in the woman's eyes. Max's skin crawled, the voice embedding itself in his mind, a haunting reminder of the nightmare unfolding around him. With a deafening roar, a section of the road ahead collapsed, taking with it trees, soil, and the remnants of the night's silence. The truck lurched forward, teetering on the edge of the newly formed cliff. Max threw himself out of the door, landing hard on the cold, uneven ground as his truck, the last symbol of his escape, tipped and plummeted into the darkness below. Panting and disoriented, Max crawled away from the edge, the ground still rumbling under him. As he turned back, he saw the woman standing at the brink of the abyss, her figure silhouetted against the dim starlight. She looked back at him one last time, her eyes conveying a silent message of sorrow and resignation, 
before she too vanished into the void with a whisper that seemed to be carried away by the wind. Max lay there, on the cold, trembling ground, alone. The tremors subsided, and a heavy silence fell over Route 44. As the adrenaline faded, Max felt an overwhelming sense of dread settle into his bones. He knew he had survived, but the horror of what he had witnessed, the woman, the voice, and the violent sundering of the earth, would haunt him forever. The phantom stretch had claimed its tales, and now he was a part of its legend, a living witness to its terrifying reality. As he slowly stood, his body aching and his mind reeling, Max looked out over the ruined landscape. The road was impassable, transformed into a twisted scar upon the earth. In the distance, the first light of dawn began to creep across the horizon, casting long shadows and illuminating the devastation around him. Max knew he needed to find help, to tell his story, but as he took his first step towards the uncertain dawn, he realized that something within him had changed forever. The phantom stretch had left its mark, and the road ahead would never be the same. Late one stormy evening, Deputy Sheriff Emma Clark was called to investigate a report of a vehicle accident on a remote stretch of Highway 101, running along the rugged cliffs of the Northern California coast. The highway, notorious for its sharp turns and minimal lighting, was not unfamiliar with incidents, especially under harsh weather conditions. However, tonight was different. The call had come from a passerby, who reported seeing a car swerve off the road and disappear into the thick underbrush, just beyond the guardrail. As Emma navigated her cruiser through the heavy rain, the windshield wipers struggling against the downpour, she felt a twinge of unease. This part of the highway was isolated, the nearest town several miles back, and the storm had reduced visibility to nearly zero. The thought of someone injured and trapped in a vehicle down the cliffside weighed heavily on her. Turning on her floodlights, Emma slowed as she approached the reported coordinates. She radioed dispatch confirming her location and requesting additional units with search and rescue capabilities. The response was crackled and intermittent. The storm was disrupting communications. Parking her cruiser on the shoulder, Emma donned her raincoat and grabbed her flashlight. The wind was fierce, howling around her as she stepped out into the night. Her flashlight beam barely cut through the darkness, but it was enough to find the broken guardrail. There, the metal was twisted and torn, a clear sign of where the vehicle had left the road. Approaching the edge, Emma shone her light down the steep incline. The beam reflected off something metallic about 30 yards down. A car, its rear end crumpled, caught in the trees that dotted the cliffside. As Emma assessed the situation, planning her next steps, she thought she heard something over the storm, a faint cry for help. It was weak, barely audible, but unmistakable. Tying a rope to her cruiser to secure herself, Emma began the treacherous descent towards the vehicle. The ground was slippery, the mud and loose stones making each step precarious. She moved carefully, aware that one wrong move could send her sliding down the cliff. Reaching the car, Emma found it precariously perched against a large tree, its front end facing downward, making it unstable. The driver's side door was ajar, and inside, illuminated by her flashlight, was a man, bloodied and slumped over the steering wheel. Sir, can you hear me? Emma called out, raising her voice over the storm. The man groaned, stirring slightly, indicating he was alive but likely in shock and seriously injured. Emma radioed for help again, but there was no response. The storm had likely cut off all communication temporarily. She knew she had to stabilize the man and try to get him up to the road. As she reached into her bag for her first aid kit, she heard it again. A cry for help, but not from the man in front of her. This time, it was different, distant and ethereal, coming from deeper within the woods. Turning her head, Emma shone her flashlight into the dense underbrush beyond the wrecked car. Her heart raced as the light caught something unusual. A faint, shadowy figure standing among the trees, watching her. The figure was motionless, its form blurred by the rain and shadows. Emma's mind raced with possibilities. Was someone else thrown from the vehicle? Was it another victim from an unreported accident? Or was it something else? Something drawn to the chaos of the storm and the tragedy unfolding? The story of Deputy Emma Clark on the storm-lashed Highway 101 
was far from over. As she faced the injured man and the mysterious figure in the woods, Emma knew the night would test her courage and resolve in ways she had never anticipated. Emma steadied her nerves, focusing first on the immediate rescue at hand. She returned her attention to the injured man in the car, ensuring he was stable enough for her to assess the other potential victim in the woods. She spoke to him gently, applying pressure to a wound on his head to slow the bleeding, and wrapped him in a thermal blanket from her emergency kit. He was semi-conscious, murmuring incoherently, unable to provide any information about the mysterious figure Emma had spotted. With the man now as stable as she could make him under the circumstances, Emma locked her cruiser's winch cable to a secure part of the tree line. This would allow her to quickly ascend if needed. She then took a deep breath and turned her flashlight toward the woods, moving towards the figure she had seen. The rain pelted down harder and the wind howled, making the trees sway ominously as she stepped into the underbrush. As she moved closer, the figure became clearer. It wasn't another victim as she had first thought, but rather an unusually shaped statue, an angelic figure with wings spread wide, standing solemnly in a small clearing. It was an old, forgotten monument, likely from a time when this part of the highway had been a scenic overlook before the road was rerouted. Emma approached the statue, her flashlight flickering as she examined it. The figure was weathered by time, covered in moss and vines, giving it an eerie, lifelike quality. As she stood there, puzzled by its presence so far from any current or historical markers, she heard the distant cry again. This time, it was louder, a clear, plaintive call for help coming from beyond the statue. Following the sound, Emma pressed deeper into the woods. The ground became uneven, and roots and rocks hidden under the wet leaves made the trek perilous. She moved cautiously, aware that each step could be hazardous, but driven by the urgency of the cries. The storm seemed to intensify around her, the wind and rain conspiring to push her back, but she persisted. The cries led her to a small ravine, partially hidden by the thick undergrowth. There, at the bottom, was a young woman, her leg trapped under a fallen tree branch. The woman was soaked, shivering, and clearly in shock, but alive. Emma called down to her, promising that help was on the way. I saw the crash, the woman called up to Emma, her voice weak but urgent. I tried to help, but I slipped and fell down here. Realizing the situation was even more critical than she had first assessed, Emma updated her mental map of priorities. She needed to secure the young woman, and get both her and the man in the car to safety. A daunting task given the worsening storm and her isolation. Emma attempted to radio for help again, and this time, her call crackled through. I need immediate evacuation for two victims, one at the crash site and another in the woods south of the highway. The storm has caused significant damage and injuries, she relayed, her voice steady despite the chaos. As she waited for a response, ensuring the young woman could hold on a little longer, Emma couldn't shake the feeling that the night had more secrets to unveil. The statue, the woman's mysterious presence in such a remote location, and the inexplicable crashes along this stretch of road. Everything seemed interconnected in ways Emma couldn't yet understand. The story of Deputy Emma Clark on Highway 101 was unfolding into a complex tapestry of events that challenged the boundaries between coincidence and fate, each moment leading her deeper into a mystery that the stormy night refused to surrender. As Emma reassured the young woman that help was on the way, the dispatcher's voice finally broke through the static of the radio, confirming that rescue units were en route, though delayed by fallen trees and debris blocking the highway. The isolation of their location, exacerbated by the storm, turned minutes into agonizing hours as Emma waited with the victims, the cold and the wet seeping into her bones. Turning her attention back to the statue, Emma pondered its significance. It seemed too coincidental that a forgotten angel would oversee such a night of misfortune. A deep, unsettling feeling suggested that there was more to this night than mere accidents and natural chaos. She walked back to the statue, her flashlight illuminating its sorrowful, moss-covered face. Its eyes, though worn by time, seemed to stare right through her, and as she looked closer, she thought she saw a tear-like streak on its cheek, glistening in the rain. Shaken by the sight, Emma returned to the edge of the ravine to check on the woman, when suddenly, the ground beneath her trembled. Startled, Emma lost her footing, sliding towards the edge as the earth began to split. The ravine was widening, 
the storm's ferocity having weakened the soil. Panicked, Emma clawed at the ground, trying to pull herself up, but the mud was too slick, the incline too steep. The young woman screamed from below, her voice filled with terror as she too realized what was happening. The tree pinning her down groaned under the shifting weight of the earth, and Emma could hear the roots starting to give way. Frantically, Emma managed to grab hold of a more stable tree root, her other hand reaching for her belt where she kept a rescue rope. Tying one end swiftly around the sturdy root, Emma threw the other end towards the woman, shouting for her to grab it. The woman reached out just as the tree finally uprooted, falling deeper into the expanding ravine. Her fingers brushed the rope, but she couldn't get a hold. Emma watched in horror as the woman, her face a mask of despair, was swallowed by the darkness below, her screams cutting abruptly as she disappeared from sight. Stunned by the sudden silence, Emma barely noticed the soft whispering that began to fill the air, voices that seemed to emanate from the statue behind her. Trembling, she turned her flashlight back towards it. The statue was no longer just an inert figure, it seemed to pulse with a dark energy, its eyes now vividly alive and weeping black tears that flowed like oil. The whispering grew louder, a cacophony of voices that drowned out the storm. Free us, they moaned over and over, a plea as chilling as it was sorrowful. Paralyzed with fear, Emma realized the statue wasn't merely a monument. It was a prison, holding back something ancient and malevolent, something that the storm had now unleashed. As the voices converged into a deafening roar, Emma felt the darkness envelop her, the last thing she saw being the statue's eyes, glowing with a malevolent light. The ground beneath her finally gave way, and she fell, the blackness swallowing her as completely as it had the young woman, the angel's cries echoing endlessly in her ears. Rescue teams would later find the patrol car abandoned by the roadside, the highway deserted and eerily silent. Deputy Emma Clark, along with the unknown woman she tried to save, vanished without a trace. Their fates intertwined with the legends of the haunted stretch of Highway 101, forever part of its dark and stormy history. Late one evening, Trooper Daniel Avery was patrolling a remote section of Interstate 70 in Colorado an area known for its scenic beauty by day and its treacherous conditions by night. The highway here cut through dense forests and steep terrain, and despite the clear skies, the darkness was profound, swallowed by the towering pines lining the road. Daniel's shift was mostly uneventful, until a call crackled over the radio shortly after midnight. Dispatch reported that a motorist had seen what appeared to be a vehicle off the road, its headlights faintly visible from the highway but several yards down an embankment. Given the potential for a serious accident, Daniel responded immediately, accelerating his patrol car toward the reported coordinates. As he approached the area, the only illumination came from his headlights and the occasional flash of his top-mounted light bar, which sliced through the night and reflected off the metallic guardrails. He slowed his vehicle as he neared the location, his eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of the reported vehicle. Finding a safe place to pull over, Daniel grabbed his flashlight and began to search the area on foot. The night was unusually silent. No wind, no rustling of wildlife, just the sound of his boots crunching the gravel shoulder of the interstate. As he moved closer to where the vehicle was supposedly spotted, he felt a chill that had nothing to do with the night air. Something about the scene felt off. His flashlight beam eventually caught something, a glint of metal far down the embankment. Daniel carefully made his way down, finding a narrow deer path that led him through the underbrush. The going was tough, the ground uneven and slippery with fallen pine needles and early autumn frost. As he reached the bottom, Daniel found the vehicle, a silver sedan, crumpled against a large tree. The front end was badly damaged, and the windshield was shattered. Approaching cautiously, he shone his light inside, checking for occupants. It was empty, no driver or passengers. Relief washed over him briefly until he noticed the interior light was on, and the driver's side door was ajar. The situation didn't sit right with him, where was the driver? And why had they left the scene? Daniel reported back to dispatch, requesting a tow truck and additional units to help search the area for any signs of the driver or passengers who might be injured and in shock, wandering nearby. As he waited for backup, Daniel decided to search the vicinity more thoroughly. He expanded his search to the surrounding woods, 
his flashlight sweeping through the trees and undergrowth. That's when he heard it. A faint moaning sound, barely audible over the hum of distant highway traffic. Following the sound, Daniel moved deeper into the woods. The moaning grew louder, more distinct. It sounded like someone in pain, disoriented perhaps. He quickened his pace, his heart pounding with a mix of adrenaline and concern. Suddenly, his flashlight beam settled on a figure lying on the ground, partially hidden by a thick bush. As he approached, he could see it was a man, lying face down, his clothes torn and dirty. Sir, can you hear me? Daniel called out, reaching for his radio to call it in. Just then, a harsh gust of wind swept through the trees, the sudden noise making him glance up momentarily. In that split second, the figure on the ground vanished. Startled, Daniel stood up, shining his light around the small clearing. There was no sign of the man, no indication he had ever been there except for a disturbance in the dirt and leaves where he had been lying. Confused and more cautious now, Daniel realized that the night's events might be far from over. As he pondered his next move, the silence of the woods seemed to deepen, as if anticipating what was to come. Standing in the eerily silent forest, Daniel tried to process what had just happened. He scanned the area again, his flashlight beam darting between the trees, searching for any sign of the man he had just seen. There was nothing only the quiet rustle of the leaves and the distant sound of the highway. Heart racing, he reached for his radio to update dispatch about the bizarre occurrence, but static crackled through the speaker, the signal distorted and unreliable in the dense woods. Frustrated and unnerved, Daniel decided he couldn't wait for backup that might not be able to find him easily. He needed to retrace his steps, get back to a location where his radio would work, and try to make sense of the situation. As he made his way back toward the embankment, the sense of being watched grew stronger. The night seemed to close in around him, the shadows more menacing. Daniel's training had taught him to trust his instincts, and every fiber of his being was on edge. He quickened his pace, the beam of his flashlight swinging frantically as he navigated through the undergrowth. Reaching the embankment, he climbed toward the highway, his movements hurried and anxious. Once at the top, he paused, catching his breath looking back down into the dark woods. He half expected to see something, anything, that would explain what he had experienced. But there was only darkness, quiet and deep. Back at his patrol car, Daniel tried the radio again. This time, his call went through, and he quickly relayed his situation to dispatch, requesting immediate assistance. His voice was tense, his usual calm demeanor shaken by the night's events. While waiting for backup, Daniel reviewed the events in his mind, trying to piece together a logical explanation. The abandoned vehicle, the missing driver, the disappearing figure, all of it felt like pieces of a puzzle he couldn't quite solve. As he mulled over the possibilities, his headlights illuminated a figure approaching from down the highway. Relieved at the prospect of backup, Daniel squinted into the lights to identify the newcomer. But as the figure came closer, his relief turned to confusion. It wasn't a police officer or any rescue personnel. It was a woman, walking slowly, her face pale and expressionless. Daniel stepped out of his car, his hand instinctively resting on his weapon. Ma'am, are you all right? He called out, his voice echoing slightly in the quiet night. The woman stopped a few feet away from him, her eyes locked on his. She was drenched, her clothes clinging to her, and she trembled visibly. Yet, it wasn't the cold that seemed to affect her. It was something else, something deeper. I heard the moaning too, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. It led me here. Chills ran down Daniel's spine as he processed her words. She seemed as disoriented and frightened as he felt. Who are you? Were you in the vehicle that went off the road? He asked, trying to gather more information. She shook her head slowly, her gaze never leaving his. No, I was drawn here. Something brought me here, she murmured, her voice trailing off eerily. Before Daniel could respond, a sudden, harsh gust of wind swept down the highway, and the woman's figure blurred, as if distorted by the air itself. In the blink of an eye, she was gone, as mysteriously as she had appeared. Stunned, Daniel stood frozen, the night silence enveloping him once more. His mind raced, the events of the evening spiraling into a narrative he could hardly believe, much less explain. The story was far from over, and as he waited in the cold, stark light of his cruiser, Daniel knew that whatever was happening on this stretch of Interstate 70 was beyond his understanding.
and potentially beyond his control. With the woman's disappearance, the air seemed to thicken, a palpable tension settling over the stretch of highway like a heavy cloak. Daniel struggled to compose himself, his mind reeling from the impossibility of what he had just witnessed. He felt alone, vulnerable, but knew he had to maintain his composure and focus on the situation at hand. The wait for backup felt interminable. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the occasional gust of wind that seemed almost mocking in its timing. Daniel paced nervously near his patrol car, every sound causing him to jump, every shadow a potential threat. The weight of his isolation grew with each passing moment, and he couldn't shake the feeling that something unseen was watching, waiting. Finally, the distant sound of sirens broke through the quiet, a small relief to Daniel's strained nerves. He watched as headlights approached, the beams cutting through the darkness and illuminating the highway. As the vehicle, a Sheriff's Department SUV, pulled up behind his patrol car, Daniel felt a momentary surge of relief, quickly dashed as he approached the vehicle and found it empty, the driver's door ajar. Panic set in as he called out, receiving no response but the howling wind. The radio in the SUV crackled to life, a dispatcher's voice calling out for Officer Avery, asking for his status. Daniel responded, his voice cracking as he explained the situation, requesting immediate additional backup and reporting the missing deputy from the SUV. As he ended the transmission, a chilling realization dawned on him. The isolation wasn't just physical. Something on this stretch of road was isolating them intentionally, picking them off one by one, luring them into traps woven from their deepest fears and anxieties. With a growing sense of dread, Daniel turned back to his car to wait, jumping when he saw the woman again. She was standing right at the edge of the road, her figure illuminated by the flashing lights. This time, her appearance was different. Her eyes were hollow, her face gaunt, as if the life had been drained from her. She spoke, her voice a hollow echo. You cannot leave. None of you can leave. We're all trapped here. Before Daniel could respond, the ground beneath him began to tremble. He struggled to maintain his footing as the earth vibrated and split, a deep, menacing crack echoing through the air. From the fissure, a blinding light and an unbearable screeching sound emerged, enveloping everything. Daniel tried to run, to escape the consuming light, but it was too fast, too powerful. As it reached him, his last sensation was of being pulled apart, atom by atom, his screams lost in the roar of the light. When the backup finally arrived, they found the patrol car and the SUV abandoned by the side of the road, doors open, lights still flashing. Of Deputy Sheriff Daniel Avery, there was no sign, no trace. He had vanished leaving behind only questions, a chilling addition to the legends of the haunted stretch of Interstate 70. And as the new officers stood by the cars, the faint sound of a woman's whisper carried on the wind, a solemn warning that some places keep their secrets by consuming those who dare to uncover them. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video.